Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 43. And in this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about this form that we've been working over, uh, working on for the past couple of tutorials. Um, so yeah, uh, we learned how to style it and we learned how to create a little bit of a form layout. Uh, now we've only used an input box and a, or yeah, a text box and a password box for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in a few more elements. Um, so the first thing I want to do is maybe add in a text area, just um, obviously a bigger box that uh, users can then enter paragraphs and paragraphs of information. So adding another element to a form once we have this all of this uh, <laughs> HTML set up uh, is quite easy. Uh, by the way, this is all the same HTML as the previous tutorial. So if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you want to go back and watch that and then come back here and watch this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and copy this entire row. So everything from for form row down to the ending form row, let's copy that and paste that down here. And uh, yeah, now we've got an extra form row. So if I save this as is and jump back over the browser, of course, that just adds an extra row uh, that looks exactly the same as the one above to our uh, form. So let's change this up a little bit. And instead of using a uh, um, another field of password, let's add a message over here. So I'm going to change the label to message. I also want to change this for attribute to message. And of course, this for attribute and the ID of the next element kind of need to match. Although, like I said, I don't want to use an input element, I want to use a text area. So I'm going to get rid of that and change this to text area. And then I'm going to give this a ID that is equal to message, because we want to make sure that the for and the ID match so that when you uh, come back over the browser, refresh and click on the label, it focuses on the actual um, text area, right? So now that that works, uh, let's go ahead and give our text area a name as well. And we can just give this a name of message, right? And <laughs> well, we've actually taken a look at what this looks like in the browser. So again, just refresh. And uh, you can see we now have a uh, place for our name, our password and our message if we want to place a message in here. Now by default, uh, text areas do scale. So you can click on the bottom corner here and you know make it a little bit bigger. So give yourself some space. But you might just want to indicate to the user that uh, they can enter a lot of information in here. So you might want to make your text area a little bit bigger. Uh, naturally. Now there are some ways we can go about doing that. I think I have showed you guys coles and rows. So um, coles obviously determine how wide our text area is going to be and rows determine how high it will be. So we can give this something like 10 rows and 100 columns. And when we save this and jump back over to the browser and refresh, our text area appears nice and big by default. Right. Uh, but yeah, um, that might not be the best way to go about doing things. We could probably just use CSS, it's going to be a lot better. So let me remove those calls and rows and jump over to CSS. And underneath my input of type text and input of type password, I also want to add another styling rule here for uh, text area. And we can give this a height of 200 pixels, and a width of something like uh, 300 pixels, right? So let's uh, save that and jump back over to the browser and refresh. And now you can see it's a little bit more evident that we can type a lot more stuff in here, right? Uh, we could also give this a max width of 300 pixels. So if we save this and jump back over to the browser and refresh, uh, I think I can't make it any wider now, right? So that's awesome. It just means that if you don't want the user somehow breaking your website by scaling this too big, then you just give that a max width. Um, now something that would be a nice trick at this point is just to make these fields all the same length. So uh, we can go over to input of type text and input of type password and also just give those a width of 300 pixels as well. So save that and uh, jump back with the browser refresh. Uh, and you can see that they don't exactly line up 100%. And the reason for that is if we inspect element over here, uh, I'm using Firebug. On our input of 
type password or even our input of uh, type text, you will notice, where is it? Yeah, okay, that's the input of type text. You will notice that we have a border of three pixels to the left and to the right and a padding of one pixel to the left and one pixel to the right. So that adds on uh, a few extra pixels. Whereas on our text area, if I look at that, the border is a little bit thinner. The border is one pixel, one pixel, and the padding is one pixel, one pixel. So to fix this, you might want to just you know, <laughs> add a few extra styling rules to either the text area or to the input boxes to make them look more or less the same. So I think what I'll do uh, is uh, jump back over to my text editor over here and under my text area, just give this a padding of three pixels. Oops. And that should more or less fix the spacing issue. So now they are exactly <laughs> the same width. So that's cool, right? Um, now something else I want to do is maybe just add a few extra elements in here. So I want to add a select box and I also want to add in a checkbox. So let's jump back over to my HTML and I think I will crop copy this uh, password row and we'll just place it down here. And then instead of using an input, uh, we'll change this to a select. So let's open up a select tag and I'll give this a name of um, country, which means I can change the label here to country. I can also change the for attribute to country. Um, make sure that I spell that right. And then I can also give my select an ID of country, right? And then I can just go ahead and place in a bunch of options in here. So let's create one option for South Africa, because that's where I am. Let's create another option for uh, India, because I have quite a lot of you guys viewing me from there. I also have quite a lot of people viewing me from the United States of America, right? <laughs> it's quite a long field to put in here. But let's save this and jump back over to the browser and refresh. And you can see that now we have a select box showing up uh, with our fields. But our select box also doesn't really match the uh, width of these other items. So you can go around playing with this and trying to style this a little bit better. Uh, so if I go over to CSS, I can create a separate styling rule for my select. And I can give that a width of, uh, what do the others have? 300 pixels. And then a padding of three pixels as well. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's come back here and refresh. And you can see that it has been uh, made a little bit bigger. Um, we might also want to change that height a bit. So I think maybe set that height to uh, 25 pixels and try and get it looking the same as the others. Um, yeah, so that is like that, right? Okay. Interesting. So the one thing I do want to mention about select boxes and also check boxes and radio buttons and a few other elements is that they are a little bit difficult to style because right now every browser uses a different rendering engine and every rendering engine in every browser tends to render things a little bit differently. So if you open this exact same form up in Google Chrome, uh, this drop down list might look a little bit different or the select box might look a little bit different. And there are some things that you can do to try and get them looking the same, but um, they will not look 100% the same all the time. So I think there are still a, a, a few rules that I can add to this select box like, um, I think if we take away the border, or if I set a border in here of one pixel solid and gray, uh, I will change the look of this just a little bit. So now it's uh, it's completely different, right? But uh, yeah, like I said, there are just some things that don't really apply to a drop down list like this. Just like if I were to add a checkbox in here. Um, so maybe let's copy this row with the password in here again and just place that above the country. And I'll change the um, uh, label over here to checkbox. It doesn't really have to say anything important. We can also just change the for attribute to checkbox, copy that, paste that in the type, tape, paste that in the name and paste that in the 
ID. Um, might be better to, you know, uh, name this something else because that way this one, this one, and this one would be different, but type still remains checkbox. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's uh, just save this and come back here and refresh. And you can see that I now have a checkbox in uh, my form as well. Uh, but then again, checkboxes are one of these things that like you can try and apply some styling rules to them, but not everything will take because uh, they are not like they are managed by different rendering engines in every browser. So if you really want them to look the same in every single browser, you actually have to make use of these things called layer masks and that gets kind of complicated and you, you kind of need to be more of an advanced user uh, than a beginner. So uh, <laughs> yeah, um, let me just uh, add in maybe a height to the checkbox. So I'll select um, my input of type checkbox check box, right? And I can give this a height of uh, 25 pixels. And uh, if I save this now and jump back over to the browser and refresh, you can see that the spacing that it takes up got a little bit bigger. It takes up 25 pixels, but the actual checkbox itself didn't really change. Um, so I could add margins and paddings to all of this, but the checkbox is always gonna be this tiny little block unless I use uh, something called a layer mask. But again, like I said, that gets really, really complicated. Uh, so I don't wanna touch on that on a beginner level. You might wanna play around with certain things like this uh, select box doesn't quite line up with everything else yet. So you can play around with that and try to get that um, looking good. But uh, yeah, I think for this tutorial, I have touched on everything I wanted to talk about. Now that we've got all of this basic form stuff out of the way, uh, I hope to see you guys taking forms and actually putting them into a website. So um, go back to my uh, tutorial on how to create a basic website layout and uh, yeah, copy and paste some of this uh, form code in there, play around with that and try and make some forms appear on your website. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development. And they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field. And they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.